Hi, I'm Aaron. Welcome to More Than The Sun. Today we're going to hack USB cables and power banks. If you've ever had a toy without batteries, or a servo go weird in the middle of a project, or even have LEDs that are supposed to be white turn red, then this is for you. All we have to do is chop the end of the USB cable off and strip the outer insulation, and then we'll cut the data wires, the green and the yellow one in this case, and strip the ends off the black and red wires. Now you wouldn't really be able to do this with a lightning cable because it's got some foil and some extra shielding on there. So really you want to use like the USB micro or kind of standard USB. From here we're going to take some solid wire and just strip off all the insulation so we have connectors to solder onto the ends. We wrap the wire to solder it in place it can be helpful to add some solder flux to get the solder to flow more easily. And then we melt some solder on there to solder it in place. All that's left to do is to add some heat shrink to both sides just to keep them from shorting each other out and also to help us remember which side's positive and which side's negative. These ones were a little flimsy so I had another piece to kind of keep them from falling apart. Some USB cables that are just for power have some weird color. So you have to use a multimeter to determine the positive side. You can see when positive is hooked to positive, it shows up as a positive voltage. If it's connected backwards, the voltage is negative. There are some safety concerns here. First of all, um, these power banks have safety circuits built in, like when you short them out, it sh shuts off pretty quick. But if that doesn't work, then it's gonna get really hot. And you should try to avoid sending more than 0.5 amps or 500 milliamps through a breadboard, otherwise things start to get pretty hot. Now to get started, we just hook up positive and negative to the positive and negative terminals for the battery. And we'll tape it down. And it's ready to go. This only works with toys that use five volts or more. And so you could think anything with three or more batteries, three triple AA C batteries. If you try to use it with a toy that used less, it would probably burn it out or break it or get really hot and melt. In the case of powering LEDs with an Arduino, one thing you, you'll realize is that the Arduino is only able to put out about 500 milliamps with the standard USB connection. You'll see here that it's actually getting up to about 670 milliamps but it caps out and so the lights start to change color as we need more current but it's not getting provided you can see that as the leds light up you get more and more leds we're trying to draw more and more current but the current doesn't change and that's why we get this kind of yellow and then red so we just hook the usb cable up put the one end in the negative and one end in the positive and plug it in at this point you don't even need the other usb plug into the arduino if we go ahead and measure the current again, you can see that it blows right past 600 milliamps right away and gets to even 2.6 amps. And so we're getting quite a bit more current here and then you can see it kind of stays, maintains its color much better all the way through. We can do the same thing with the micro bit. It has the same problem but can provide even less current. It caps out about 180 milliamps. To do this one, we're gonna take the positive end of the LED and hook it up to the positive end of the USB and connect the ground to the negative. You'll see that once we do this, it doesn't work. And this is because we actually have to connect the grounds together. Now make sure you don't connect the five volt, the red positive one back to the micro bit because you most likely damage the micro bit. But once we hook this up right, you can see that we're getting plenty of current out to power our project.
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any ideas for using hacked up USB cables.